Hello everyone, welcome to video 3 of chapter 4. In the last video, we mentioned um, coefficient matrix being in looks like it's being transposed. And we also noticed that the notation was a bit heavy, so now we will introduce a more compact notation using matrix and vector. Okay, so let's define some um, vectors and the matrix. Let's collect all the coefficients in A and form the A matrix. So um, A has uh, an N columns and M rows, and the coefficients are A, I, J for I from 1 to n, j from 1 to n. And then I form a vector b, which is of length m, and a vector c, which is of length n. And furthermore, I also introduce um, a vector x, which is of length n, and correspondingly a vector y, which is of length n. And here I also write out the transpose matrix of A, and which now um, has uh, M columns and uh, N rows. Okay. Um, I apologize, and there's a typo here. That shall be N. I'll fix it in the handout. We also introduce the dot product which we are familiar with, we learn in calculus. So um, c dot x is the same as x dot c, which is um, c transpose times x, also is x transpose times c, which is basically c1 times x1 add c2 x2 add all the way to cn xn. Okay? And then you can also define the dot product between y and the b as long as they have the same number of elements. Okay, now we can formulate our um, max problem in a very compact way. So the max problem is the following. I want to maximize z, which is c dot x, subject to the constraint a times x is less than b. So a is a matrix, x is a vector, b is a vector, okay? And the x vectors bigger than zero. Okay, so with this max problem there, and we can also formulate the dual, which is the minimum problem, we call it problem D, and is the following. So we would minimize v equals b dot y subject to the constraint a transpose y is bigger than c and y is bigger than zero. Okay, So the previous definition where each of them takes a whole page now can be written by each of them just one line with this notation. Okay, um, let's make a further observation, which is really useful. So, um, we observe that any linear programming problem can be stated in the max form. So, how do you do that? Well, there are a few tricks I can mention here. So, the first trick that is, so, if you shall have a minimization problem, then you can change it into a maximization problem by multiplying negative 1 on the objective function. A second trick, the max problem needs to have inequalities, right? So if you shall have equality in your problem, then you can replace it by two inequalities. For example, if you have a statement A equals B, then you can change it into A bigger than equal to b and a less than equal to b, this would effectively imply a equals b. 
And the third trick, so if your inequality is in the wrong side, now we change all equality into inequality. So we have a bunch of inequalities. So some of them might have the wrong direction of inequality, and then you can change that direction by multiplying both sides with negative 1, and, and then you switch it. Okay, so by a combination of these three tricks, you can write any LP problems in the max form. Okay, so here is a, a summary of what you do, how to write the dual of any LP problem in two steps. Step one, you would rewrite your LP problem in the max form. And then step two, you follow definition three, you form the dual of that max problem. We'll take an example later in this video. Um, now let's ask a question. So, what is the dual of the problem D? Um, let's recall, we labeled the problem D as the following. Minimizing V is B dot Y subject to ATY bigger than C and Y bigger than zero. And this is actually the dual of the original max problem. Well, we can form the dual of the problem D following um, the suggestion from the previous page, taking two steps. So step one, I will change the D into a max problem, okay, by following our tricks. So first, um, changing the minimization into maximization by multiply negative 1. So I will maximize negative b dot y subject to and then in the max problem I need to have less than equal sign and here is bigger than equal then I multiply by negative on both sides. So negative a t y less than c and y is bigger than 0. So this becomes a max problem. And now we form the dual of the max problem in step one. Okay, so now I have minimizing and the right hand side dot y, so a uh, dot uh, c x, so negative c dot x, that's the objective function, subject to. So um, then you take this a here, this uh, coefficient, negative a transpose, transpose it times x. And then you um, switch the inequality. Now you have 2 bigger than or equal to this coefficient here, which is negative b. Okay, And then x bigger than 0. So this is just strictly following the definition and form the dual. OK, let's uh, um, clean up a little bit here. And let's get rid of the negative sign in, in this formulation. And uh, so minimizing negative c dot x is the same as maximizing c dot x, right? Subject to, let's look at this constraint here. So a negative a transpose, transpose. If you transpose twice an a matrix or a negative a matrix, you get it back. So you basically have negative a x bigger than negative b. And then you change the sign of it and it becomes less than equal to and you get the negative sign okay and x is bigger than zero so we have this problem now maximizing c dot x subject to ax less than b x bigger than zero does that look familiar well yes indeed um, we recognize this as the original max problem so the D problem, the problem D here is the dual of this max problem. And now we have shown that the dual of the dual is the max problem again. So this discussion is in an abstract setting for any coefficient matrix. So we have the conclusion now, that is, 
the dual of the dual is the original problem. Okay, so this is an operator. If you apply twice, it cancels itself. Okay, so um, hope you enjoy this, and I will see you next time.